Make history that the first team to ever win a playoff series without scoring three goals in any single game. Let's go to Michael Kim and his gang. Mike? All right, Steve, Darren, coming up on NHL tonight, the Penguins have their backs to the igloo. Find out if Yarmir Yager's return makes a difference. The Blues forced a game six. What about a game seven? And the Bees look to close out the Canes. All that and more on NHL tonight, next. Welcome back to another exciting edition of NHL Tonight. I'm Michael Kim along with Barry Melrose and Ray Ferraro. Four games on the schedule this evening and all four games, one team faced elimination. We begin in Boston. For the Carolina Hurricanes, their backs are against the wall. It's do or die time now or never. The cliches, they can continue, but not Keith Primo and the Canes unless they win Sunday's Game 6 in Boston where the Canes captain carries a streak of 16 postseason games without a goal. And Ray, he needs to get on track for the Canes to have a chance, right? Yeah, he certainly does. He's, the, he's supposed to be the offensive leader on this hockey club. He hasn't scored a goal in the series. Also, Carolina needs better play from Arthur Zerbe. He, he played great in the first couple of games of the series, struggled a little bit in the last couple. Ray Bork played 53 minutes in game five. It'll be important to see how much he can play. And the one thing the Bruins have had, great scoring balance. Ten different players have scored in the first five games of the series. All right, let's check on the highlights. Tim Taylor, who left game five with a separated shoulder, shows no ill effects of that. Natalie Nolan Pratt and slamming Keith Primo there. As for Ray Bork, looking fresh, drives to the net. Arturs Urbe stones him. Later, Keith Primo circles out of the corner. With the stop. Somehow still. Glenn Wesley on the rebound, then on the power play. Joe Thornton, his first career postseason goal. 1-0, Boston with the lead. Ray, what happened? Jason Allison makes a nice pass to Kristich, but Kristich shows great vision, finds Thornton through the crowd, and Thornton almost missed it, banks it in off the post. Boston goes up 1-0. Second period now, Canes with the offense struggling. Gary Roberts fans on the two-on-one breakout. Look at that. Then, Dagley thought he had a goal on that play. Yeah, absolutely. Sammy Kapanen unloads the slapper, rebound to Roberts. Goes high and wide. Paul Maurice can only choose gum harder. Bruins with the breakout. Anson Carter, Steve Hines, they with the give and go. And Anson Carter with another goal. His third of the postseason, Barry. You're going to see great movement by Anson Carter. This guy's been great since about the 10 game mark of the last of the uh, season. Carried it over into playoffs and been spectacular. The Canes continue to miss golden opportunities. Ray Shepard with the shot, the save, and Wesley overskates the rebound. Then Defoe, he stopped 16 shots in the second period, including the backhander from Battaglia. Third period, time runs out on the Hurricanes. The Boston Bruins go on to win it. 2-0 the final. They take the series, their first series victory since 1994. Carolina has now lost all eight best of sevens in franchise history. Byron Defoe, 31 saves. He has six career playoff wins. Three have been by shutouts. And let's check on Ray's keys once again, right? Well, you know, Primo, he, he played hard. He, you know, it's not that he doesn't play hard. He just wasn't able to score again. He had some chances. And when you're supposed to score and you don't, it leaves a big hole. Arthur Zerbe, he, he was not really a terrible, terrible factor in the game today. He played well. He gave up a couple of goals, but really wasn't a deciding factor in it. Ray Bork played great minutes again tonight. I mean, he's so solid. He can really, he dominates the game from his position. And Joe Thornton became the 11th different player for the Bruins to score in this series. When you have that type of scoring balance, it makes it a, dif you're a difficult team to defend. And Boston deserved to win this series and, and to go on to the second round. Yeah, Barry, you thought one of the keys was the power play for the Bees. I, I thought it looked very confident, and, and Ray talked about Thornton's goal, but there was more to that power play than just uh, a great pass from Christich to Thornton on the back door. They moved the puck very well. They showed great composure getting it in. Allison carries it in. Now you're going to see the movement. Back and forth on the point a couple times. Look them make the Carolina box move side to side. That's when you're trying to uh, spread them out and look for a passing lane. Now they go down low, attacking the net. Now you're going to see where the mistakes are made. Carolina box has to move to the right, all of them. Decision safe in front of the net if you just stay there, but he panics and chases Allison behind the net. That leaves a hole in the slot area where Christich will come. Now, if Christich just shoots it, Irby probably makes a save, but there's a vision. Ray talked about finding Thornton on the back door. Thornton comes in, and he's becoming much more of a factor physically and offensively. So the power play was good. They scored a goal, and they moved it well every time they're out there. So that bodes well for the next round. 
We're going to move on to Pittsburgh now, and with the Penguins on the brink of elimination, Yarmir Yager back in the lineup after missing four straight games with a groin injury. Now get this, guys. Yager said tight pants helped him play in this one, helping to keep his groin wrapped tightly. Ah, tight pants. <laughs> first period, no score, double strike first. Sergey Breland, Some guys should wear tight pants. his third goal of the postseason, 1-0 Devils, Barry. We're watching the draw here. Verdina's been great on the draw all series long, best in the NHL. The referee or linesman makes some change there. Right then, the Devils win the draw. Now you're going to see Holik go behind the net. They can't handle him physically. No one picks up Breland in front. Breland makes a heck of a shot up over the goaltender. Second period, here come the Pens. One of the guys filling in well for Yager in his absence, Martin Straka. His fifth goal of the playoffs, that ties it at one and Ray. What about Yarmir Yager? Well, Yager started slow. It took him a while to get into the game. Here, Kip Miller's telling him, hey, it's your shift. Get going here. It's not like this guy needs too much help. He splits the defense. He goes in. The shot hits Strack in the foot. But as the game started to go on, you started to see Yager assert himself more and more. Here's a two-on-one. The Brodeur makes the save. But Yager, you can see, when you miss a week, you're, you run out of gas in a hurry. Yeah, Mario Lemieux is former teammate and maybe future owner watching from the stands. Third period, power play for New Jersey. Scott Niedermeyer. The deflection off the shot by Jason Arnott and Niedermeyer with the credit on the goal. His first of the playoffs, 2-1 New Jersey. Later in the third, the Devils try to put it away. But Tom Barrasso coming up with a big stop. He had 25 saves in this one. The Pens still within one. Just over two minutes left in the third. Yarmir Yager and Barry, if you give this guy enough chances, he's going to burn you. Well, I think Titoff went with a tight pants tonight, too, because he was great also. Right here, good pass to Titoff. He goes behind the net. Niedermeyer's got Jager. If you just stay with him, there's no goal. But he panics and chases the man behind the net also. Jager gets the rebound. All right, in overtime, tied at two. Straka along the near boards. Then Jager for the game winner, his second goal of the game, second of the series. And the hero in Pittsburgh on this night, not Mario Lemieux. But it's Yarmir Yager. The series tied at three. The Devils losing a playoff overtime for the sixth straight time. Mark Ambrose's career record now in these situations drops to three and ten. As for the Pens, Rob Brown put it best when he said, "We were two minutes away from going home for the summer, and then he came through." He meaning Yarmir Yager. You know, four out of the game six was game seven. So that's a good play, and uh, you were almost out of the playoffs. Two minutes to go. You know, it's just. And then we tied it, we just, you just got nothing to lose, you know, it, we've, you know, it's just, and the game seven, it's going to be the same way, you know, just, we are big time underdog, nobody believe out before this series, you know, we just, I still think we are a good enough team to, to beat them. He does well against every team in the National Hockey League, so I'm sure, you know, I'm not shaking my head at all, I mean, uh, that's the kind of player he is, and, and, uh, and we know that, and, uh, we're just going to have to do a better job on him maybe the next game. Anything can happen in game seven. So, I mean, we got to be prepared and we got to be ready to, to give it everything we possibly got. It's down to one game for the Devils and the Pens. That takes place Tuesday night in New Jersey, and you can see it courtesy of the worldwide leader in sports, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific on ESPN. Still ahead on our show, Craig Conroy and St. Louis look to give Phoenix the blues, but Jim Schoenfeld guarantees he won't have any of that. We'll explain when we come back. Something that small can't hurt your car? Even smaller carbon deposits can clog your car's fuel injectors. So use Gum Out Extra Fuel Injector Cleaner to get rid of deposits for smoother overall performance. And did I mention better acceleration? Drive your fuel injectors clean with Gum Out Extra. Now a call from the road is like a call from the park because now they're as affordable as calling from home. Introducing AT&T Personal Network. Your calling card calls, wireless calls, and long-distance calls from home are just 10 cents a minute. All 
for just $29.99 a month. You can even add internet access. Just call 1-800-4ATT now. AT&T Personal Network. Now, no matter how you call, it's like calling from home. Call 1-800-4ATT now. Today, Labatt announced the expansion of Labatt Blue to the U.S. market. Oh? Huh? I love Canada. It's my home. But come on, it's an entire country north of Buffalo. This coat is not that warm, eh? <laughs> oh, that's lovely. If I can get the best part of Canada and live in the States, you tell me, huh? Checkmate. Labatt Blue. Pure Canada. Did not see that coming. Harrison has been in the penalty box. McAlpine, Finley, and Rivers are the ones who's... Oh, Young with a shot, he scores! It went over the glove of Javi Bullen. How quickly did that happen? And oh my, Javi Bullen can't believe it. And this series is going to a game six. Watching that goal, no doubt, brought back some bad memories for Jim Schoenfeld. Back in 1995, Shoney and the Capitals led Pittsburgh three games to one, then saw the Pens take the series. The beginning of a dubious hat trick for him. The following year, the Cats allowed a 2-0 lead to slip away. After missing the playoffs in 97, his new team, the Coyotes, led Detroit 2-1. And if memory serves me right, the Wings won the Stanley Cup last year. That brings us to this year and a 3-1 lead over St. Louis, down to 3-2 heading into Sunday's matchup in the Gateway City. And the St. Louis fans already having JR's postseason plans confirmed there, guys. Ronick. Sipping those power shakes thanks to that broken jaw. First period, no score. Phoenix applying the pressure. And Mike Stapleton picks up the puck. And he beats Grant Fuhrer. His first goal of the postseason, Barry, makes it 1-0 Phoenix. I love to see guys like this get in on a goal. Jimmy Cummings, four checks, takes the body on McGinnis. The second guy, Tavis Hansen, comes in, just called up from Springfield. The third guy, Mike Stapleton, receives a loose puck and drills a slapper over Grant Fuhrer's glove. Less than a minute later, the Blues answer two on one. Blair Atchinim, Greg Conroy, and he beats the Boulin Wall. 1 1 the score. Then, moments later, St. Louis on the power play. Pierre Turgeon, the game five hero, Scott Young. And Scott Young shoots and scores. 2 1 St. Louis, and Ray Phoenix can't clear and pays for it. Yeah, Keith Carney's got control of the puck here. He throws it up the boards. Turgeon corrals it, and he does what he does best. This is a great passer. He slides it to Young. Young does what he does best. He's a shooter, and it's 2-1 St. Louis. Second period now, game tied at 2. Phoenix on the power play. Robert Reichel to Teppo Newmanen. Hello, Newmanen. His second goal of the postseason, 3-2 Yotes. St. Louis answers right away on their power play. Scott Young, the shot stop, but Chris Pronger on the rebound. That ties it to three, and Gary, the Blues power play once again coming up big. A couple things happened here. You see with Al McGinnis, they're really trying to take him away from the play, not letting him shoot. So what does he do? Pass through the probably the second hardest shooter in the NHL, Young. He shoots a slapper at the net. Now what's happening also is Pronger goes to the front of the net. With his size and strength, they can't move him from there, and he gets a rebound goal. Third period, the Blues break the tie. Jeff Finley, just one goal in the regular season. That's his first goal of the postseason. JR can only watch as the Blues win it 5-3. to three. The series tied at three. So the Blues win their first home game in the series, forcing a seventh game Tuesday night in Phoenix. Speaking of seventh, guys, St. Louis tries to become the seventh team this decade to overcome a 3-1 deficit. Meanwhile, the Coyotes will have to wait at least another game to win their first playoff series since 1987. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to win Game Seven. Uh, it's 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 a it's a type of series where I think both teams have, have played extremely well. Uh, every game has been a one-goal game outside of this game. I would tell you I'll stake my job on it, but that's already been done. So I'll just say we're going to win Game Seven. Maybe Mark Messier can do it. And a coach, it's tough, but I think that's a rallying point for his team to say, hey, you know, we're we're going to win this series and and give them some hope and. You know, on the same hand, that's a little motivation for us. And, you know, guys like Courtney will be, uh, that, that gets those guys like that fired up. So, you know, it's good for us, and it's probably good for them. All right here, you're going to see playoff wins all time. Patrick Waugh, of course, is uh, up there, 102. Grant Fuhr, who's going to be playing in that game, 89. Billy Smith, Ken Dryden, and Mike Vernon, who will probably be playing uh, next game for uh, San Jose also. All right, Ray, let's take another look at that game winner by Jeff Finley. What did you like about that play? Well, what I didn't like, really, was that Phoenix... As Al Arbor used to tell us, 
the puck is not a magnet. You don't have to stare at it all the time. And what ends up happening here is Phoenix is going to break down defensively. As he did on the second goal, Terjean right here comes off the bench and steals the puck from the Phoenix defenseman. Phoenix is starting to leave the zone, but now they all have to turn around and come back because Terjean has taken possession of the puck. He takes it off the boards and he just throws it at the front of the net. And Finley's going to come in from the point. You're going to take a look right here. Phoenix is in good defensive position. They have two guys out high and down low they have three guys in position. Their Turgeon is taken off the boards and the two defensemen are in front of the net. Finley's going to walk around the pick on the outside and take, take his shot. They're still in good position. Right here the puck goes behind the net and this is where it turns into a magnet. There's four Phoenix guys below the hash marks. There's only one guy of the forwards that's in the right position, and that's the forward that's out in the high slot. Jeff Finley is standing all by himself, and when Turgeon turns around and throws the puck out into the slot, Finley's the only guy with it, and he's got a clean lane to the net. And he doubled his goal production for the year right here. He fires it by Javi Bullen, and when you, when you break down here and, and you lose the puck, you lose where the puck is in your zone, it, you, you're just asking for trouble. And what happened to Phoenix? Everybody hooked onto the puck. Nobody turned around and found Jeff Finley. Turgeon throws it blind, but Finley's able to go down there and pound it into the net. Well, momentum clearly on the side of St. Louis. And history not kind to the Coyotes. The franchise has advanced past the second round only twice in the entire history of the franchise. 20 years now, they've gotten past the first round, we should say. All right, still ahead on the show. Cujo and the Maple Leafs try to win their first playoff series in five years on the 32nd anniversary to the day of a victory that gave Toronto its last Stanley Cup championship. Introducing new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay on the phone 20 hours a week and get a pasty complexion, flabby body, and, and a, a great, great new nickname at school. Exercised lately. We love to watch TV. So when I heard all this stuff about how satellite TV is better than cable, I thought, great. Not so great. For instance, additional outlets. With cable TV, they don't cost much at all. With satellite TV and a separate receiver for each set, that could cost a bundle. And get this, we're responsible for service and installation. Our cable company has been providing guaranteed service for years. Satellite TV, no thanks. We'll keep our cable. Comcast, everything you connect with. Every Friday, ESPN unveils a new profile in the countdown of the 50 greatest athletes of the century. This week, The Mick. From the plains of Oklahoma to the badlands of the Bronx, Mickey Mantle etched his name in Yankee history. From his raw country power through his brilliant but injury-plagued career to his untimely death, Mickey Mantle proved his mettle time and again, both on and off the field. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, number 37, Mickey Mantle. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN, presented by General Motors. The Toronto Maple Leafs are on the verge of NHL history. No team has ever won a best-of-seven series without scoring three or more goals in a single game. In other words, for all the criticism against Flyers goaltender John Van Beesbrook, he's allowed only eight goals total in the series. But you have to admit, the timing of those goals has been pretty bad. As for Game 6, Cujo looking to close out the Flyers' first period. Scoreless, Flyers on the rush, and the puck gets deflected from LeClaire to Mark Recchi and Cujo with the stop. Later in the first, a power play situation, Carl Dykaus. To McGillis, off the post. Then Barry? Right off the draw, you see LeClaire, best forward all, game, all series long, goes out to McGillis. McGillis one times, but Cujo is waiting for him. Then Chris Terrian shoots it in. The bad carom, but Cujo there to knock it away. 12 saves for him in the first, scoreless after one. Second period now, Ray really struggling on the power play. When you start to struggle, you tend to hold on to the puck a little bit too long, and this is what's happening for Philly. They're trying to look for the perfect play all the time. Duchesne walks down, he wants to shoot it, he hangs on. They clear it away. You're passing up shots that you would normally take. Here's another chance. Desjardins fakes the forward down. He's in. He's in position to shoot it. He passes in the slot. They're in shooting positions. They're just not getting the puck to the net. Frustration right there, Damon Lankoff. When you play a team six times in about 12 days, you better hate somebody. Right here, Jonesy, high sticks, Berard across the back of the head, gets a two-minute minor. Uh, Toronto didn't score in the power play. Berard comes back and lets Jonesy know that's not allowed. And uh, McGillis is right there, but there's hatred and, and dislike when you play this team too many times. Third period, Derek King 
with the shot. Beezer with the glove save. Late third period now, still scoreless. Barry, maybe some controversy here. Well, you're going to look at this, and they're going to be talking about this. Leclerc comes in. He doesn't have a helmet. Uh, there's definitely an elbow. It doesn't hit him in the head. It hits him in the back, but there's a penalty. On the ensuing power play, Gerard with the shot. Loose puck gets to Barrison, and he beats the Bees of the first goal of the game. 1-0 Toronto. So last chance for the Flyers, and Eric Desjardins shoots it over the net. Cujo and the Leafs advance. It looks like a fight there. They're just excited about advancing. They take the series 4-2. to two. The Leafs win all four games by one goal. It's the first playoff series win for Toronto since 1994. Cujo with 26 saves, his eighth career playoff shutout. Right. As, as, we're, uh, as we're seeing here, the, the sixth lowest, lowest uh, scoring series in the six-game series, this is unbelievable. The U'd have... The Leafs number one in goals during the regular season. Philadelphia number nine in goals in the regular season. And they can only put together 20 goals in the whole series. And as you mentioned, Van Beesbrook was good. It's just the timing of the goals that he gave up hurt Philadelphia. So Toronto, the first team in NHL history to win a seven-game series without scoring three or more goals in a single game. And you talked about before the game, we should know, Thank Sergei you. Thank you. would be a key in... What do you know? Well, they've really done a great job in Sundin. Uh, he really hasn't been a factor offensively. He's a captain. He's a top scorer. So it fell to someone else to be the guy. And, and Berezin, uh, who had a broken jaw at the end of the season and, and really didn't uh, play that well the first couple games, really took off, I thought, in the last few games. Tonight, he had some good chances. You see how quick this guy is. Great move into the middle. Good wrist shot. Doesn't slap the puck very much, but very active. Even the great Curtis Joseph makes the odd mistake. And right here, he got bailed out big time by Brian Burrard. Great skate save. Langkow, he'll be thinking about this for a long time because that was probably the win right there, the way Philadelphia is playing defense. All right, let's just find out how good you are. Pretty cocky tonight, huh? <laughs> Time to find out tonight's question, folks. Another multiple choice question. Who is the oldest goalie to appear in a playoff game? Juan, Bauer, Patrick, Sawchuck. The answer when we come back.